It is 431. How do we feel about getting started? Sounds I great. We're not? good to go. Okay. So if you are joining us, welcome. My name is Anna Mattis. I am a senior consultant for Sidelets Education, as well as our product development manager. And with that, I had the pleasure of working with these wonderful ladies that I'm about to introduce on this very, very special book that's coming out. We are already thrilled to see how many of you have either obtained copies of it, little sneak peeks of it. We're going to give you some more of those sneak peeks during this, as well as get you geared up for the virtual launch party that we're going to be having for this book on November 16th. So I'm already going to throw that out there right now to mark your date. And we're going to have some fun surprises and giveaways surrounding that, but I'll get to that at the end. So if this is your first time joining us, there's a couple of logistics to keep in mind. First of all, we are recording this session, so you will be able to come back to it later. We are streaming live on YouTube and the presentation will be sent out to you. So I know we get a couple of questions throughout the session, whether you're gonna see this again, you are going to see this again. So don't you worry, as long as you are registered for this, you will be emailed the follow-up materials. Second, when you're chatting with us, please be sure that you are clicking all panelists and attendees. We have several people that are writing to us and we love hearing from you and where you're from, but it's only the three of us ladies that are seeing it. So if you want everybody else to see your comments and see your questions throughout the webinar, go ahead and change that on the bottom, that blue little tab with the arrow and click all panelists and attendees so everybody can see you. And then finally, um, we at sidelitseducation.com have a plethora of resources for you to go to once you're done with our webinar today. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about those at the end, but we're going to have information about our upcoming webinars, our upcoming conferences that you can sign up for, trainings, other books, and things like that. So that will always be available to you. If you are on Twitter, we have some hashtags that are down there on the bottom of your screen. Sidelitz Ed Chat is an ongoing Twitter handle that we use both for our Twitter chat as well as for our books and trainings that are coming up. So it'd be great for you to take a look at that. And the specific hashtag we have for this book is reading writing L's, E L. So go ahead and mark those. And let's see. Okay. Now we are going to be joined, as you can already see on your screen, by Valentina Gonzalez and Dr. Melinda Miller, who are the authors of this new book. If you are familiar with Sidelets and you're familiar with the internet and Twitter, you probably know Valentina Gonzalez. She needs no introduction. She hosts our Twitter chats. She creates wonderful, compelling visuals for us. Um, and her experience runs really, really deep when it pertains to ESL. She was an ESL student herself, just like I was. She was from Serbia. And that really does color her experience and add a lot of richness and depth when she trains and the stories that she provides. She has been an ESL teacher, a co-teacher, and a professional development specialist, and now has been on our team, and we're very, very lucky to have her. And she's really lending a lot of her valuable experience to this book that she co-authored with Dr. Melinda Miller. Um, Mel is currently a professor at Sam Houston State University, where she teaches literacy. Mel works with um, undergraduates, master students, doctoral students, and she was also a classroom teacher and reading specialist for several years. And so the combination and the powerhouse of these two women in writing this book together is really phenomenal. And we're so excited to be able to add it to our Sidelets repertoire. So I just like saying the word repertoire as well. There we go. Repertoire. <laughs> repertoire. <laughs> Everybody say it. Repertoire. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank okay. you so much, Anna. We appreciate that very much. Um, Mel and I are so excited to share this book with you all and to share time with you today as well. We're really thrilled not only to be able to give you a few of the tips and strategies, but also just to spend some time collaborating with you about English learners reading and writing. Uh, English learners make up over 10% of our student population K through 12 in the United States. And I know many of you are joining us from outside of the United States and we're super happy you're here to serving students who are adding English as a second language and are learning to read and write as well and learning content. And this is such an important thing for our ELs. So we we need to know how to support them the best way that we can. When Mel and I wrote this book, 
we were looking at our students through the lens of understanding how to serve uh, English learners and accommodate instruction, but also remembering that as educators, we need to have a lot of tools, tips, and strategies to make sure that we can effectively teach students that are in front of us. And that's why it's so critical for, um, for all of us to ensure that we have the best strategies under our belt. And with that being said, let's talk about core values and beliefs. So I am very excited that you're here today as well. And I'm going to start off by talking about our core beliefs. So our core beliefs can be seen all throughout the book. So these are the things that we based everything that we wrote on. So um, I want you to think about what your core beliefs are about your English learners and their literacy. So think about those students that you teach, your English learners, and what, what you believe about those English learners when it comes to their literacy learning. And what I'd like for you to do is to type into the chat using the sentence stem, I believe that. Tell us about your core beliefs. I'll give you just a, a moment to do that. Okay, great, thank you, good. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. So you can continue typing into the chat and we'll move on to the next slide and talk about what our core beliefs are. Okay, so the core beliefs that, that we were thinking about as we wrote the text are, English learners benefit from multiple opportunities to read, write, listen, and speak with their peers throughout the day. So it's very important that we always think about providing those opportunities for the students to be speaking throughout the day, speaking to their peers and speaking their new language, English, to their peers, speaking to us and that they have many, many opportunities throughout the day to use that new language. Also, another belief is that literacy in any language holds value and can be leveraged to support learning English. So every, everyone's language is valuable and we can always build upon what we already know. The use of a student's primary language is valuable in the classroom. So again, we build from what we already know to something new. So they can, and many times if it's, um, if it's a language that shares cognates with English, we can use those cognates to build the English language understanding as well. All children should see themselves in the literature and on the walls of the classroom. So this is so important too. It helps the students feel that they belong to the community of learners in the classroom. And it helps them to see themselves in the literature. And when they see themselves in the literature, they think this book is for me. Reading is for me because I see myself in the literature. So that's very important too. Student choice in reading and writing is essential. And, um, and this is something that you'll hear over and over again throughout our book. And just think about how much more you like to read something when it's something that you've chosen to read instead of something that was assigned to you. Students need plenty of time for reading and writing practice, just like anything else, like riding a bike or playing an instrument or sewing. We have to practice reading and writing in order to become proficient at reading and writing. So we need lots of practice and we need to give them that time at school to have lots of practice. The use of culturally inclusive text is necessary to create a welcoming classroom environment. So again, we want to include all students and all students' cultures. And on page 128 of our book, we have a list of those books that 
are culturally inclusive that you can use in your classroom. Okay, so these are our core beliefs. Okay, so instruction today looks different, especially during this pandemic that we're in right now. So um, reading and writing workshop can be done whether you're face-to-face -face or whether you're online with your students. So, um, so we'll talk for just a little bit about how that might look to do reading and writing workshop, both online and face-to-face, -face. okay? Okay, so we have both synchronous and asynchronous learning. So synchronous learning takes place at the same time. So the, um, the students are together, whether they're online or face-to-face -face, with the teacher at the same time. And so synchronous learning is teacher-paced. Um, there's discussion between the teacher and the student, so they're using their, their English. Um, also, teachers can provide clarification for the students when they're synchronous. Also, the teacher can provide coaching. The students can work in small groups, whether on, online or face-to-face, -face. and also the teacher can provide feedback when we're in a synchronous setting, when we're learning at the same time. So asynchronous is learning at varied times and asynchronous learning is more student paced. So um, we might be reading independently, viewing something independently, writing independently or doing research. But of course the teacher can still support students as they're working asynchronously. And this can also be both online and face-to-face. Okay, so if we think about what reading and writing workshop would look like synchronously and asynchronously, we can think about this. So when we're learning at the same time synchronously, we can provide the mini lesson. And if it is online, this mini lesson can either be face-to-face -face like we're doing now, but um, through Zoom or something, or it can be recorded. So the students can go back and, and look at it again if they need to. Also, we can do read aloud in the format that we're on right now, whether it's Zoom or some other format that you might have. Um, also, a read aloud can be recorded. And of course, if you're doing the read aloud face-to-face, -face, students can respond to what you're reading too, which is also very important that, that they're able to respond. Also, a write aloud um, can be done face to face. And when you're thinking about it online, you could use either Google Docs or you could share your screen like we're doing right now. Um, with shared reading and shared writing, you can do it through, um, through Google Docs for the writing. You can also share the screen for the writing. And for the reading part, you can read just like we're doing now, or you can show a video of yourself reading. Okay, also for guided reading, you can do it by using Zoom and going into the small groups or just inviting a few students at a time that are in a particular group to come on um, online with you and read in the guided reading groups, or you can break out into small groups. Okay, for asynchronously, so just like in the face-to-face -face classroom, we can use asynchronous learning online and the students can learn at varied times. So the students can replay the mini lesson, they can replay the read aloud, and also they can do independent reading and independent writing. But again, the teacher is there for support as well. And for the, for the conferences that you have with reading and writing, you can do that by Zoom so that, that you and that one student can have a one-on-one -on -one, um, by Zoom to support the student while they're doing their independent reading and writing, okay? So of course there are some benefits to synchronous instruction and asynchronous instruction. So with the synchronous instruction, when the students are learning at the same time, um, there's that social interaction that they get. They're able to use their language. Um, they're able to have a lot of conversations um, and have discussion and also they get immediate feedback from the teacher. So, um, so it's important if you're doing synchronous instruction online to make sure that it's not just you talking, but that the students are able to have conversations among um, their peers 
with a partner or with the whole group as well. Okay. And so for asynchronous learning, the benefits are that there's a lot more flexibility and students can take more time. They can go back and review something. They, they can take their time right as long as they want to. Um, also, there's time for deeper processing whether the students are in the classroom face-to-face -face or whether they're online, they can sit by themselves and really think about what they're reading and get into that reading zone where they're lost in a book or they can get into that writing zone where they're, um, they're very busy at what they're working on and can really think and process. And also um, they can read something that they're passionate about and they have choice. Of course, it's important to have choice of what to read and write both. Okay, so scaffolding is support that leads to independence. And we can think of scaffolding as I do, we do, and you do. And Pearson and Gallagher came up with the terms I do, we do, and you do. So for I do, this is a lot of support by the teacher. You have heavy teacher support with the the teacher either doing a read aloud or doing a write aloud. And again, the students are there and they're responding and they're talking to their peers using their English, but the teacher is doing most of the talking. It's very heavy in teacher support. For we do, the students are working together. It's This is like guided practice. The students are practicing whatever it is that they need to learn, but the teacher is there guiding them. And then for you do, this is our time for independent work. So independent reading and writing would definitely be for you do, okay? So for the, the reading and writing workshops, this is what I do, we do, and you do, the gradual re release of responsibility would look like. So for I do, we would have our mini lesson, our read aloud and our write aloud. And for instance, the whether you're, Online or face to face, the teacher could be working on their writing piece and talking their thoughts out loud as they're writing so they can give the students a window into their brain of what's going on while they're writing. What is it that that teacher is thinking about while he or she is writing so that that students can see what that process looks like for we do we would have our shared reading our guided reading and our shared writing. And again, this is both the teacher and the student working together. There's still a lot of scaffolding by the teacher, but the students are actually doing the work um, together. Okay, and then for you do, this is independent reading and independent writing when we have the reading and writing workshops. And the, the teacher is still there, but the students are working independently. Yes, this is this is all grades. Yes, kindergarten on it can go all the way. I've done this with college students even. So yes, this is for all grades. So for I do, again, it's explicit and modeled. For we do, this is structured and supported. And for you do, it's automatic and natural and the students are working on their own. It's something they're excited about working on. And again, the gradual release of responsibility. I do, we do, you do. Okay, I want you to think now about reading and writing, and I want you to think about what components of reading and writing are most important to you. So what are the components that are most important to you in reading and writing? What needs to be included in the classroom? So using the sentence stem, the most important components of my reading and writing classroom are, again, I would like for you to type that into the chat and finish the sentence stem. The most important components of my reading and writing classroom are. Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. 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 Oh, these are wonderful. Wonderful. 
Okay, we can go on to the next slide and you can keep on typing your response to the STEM. Okay, so as I was reading through what you were writing, I saw all of these things. So, and probably just about everything that you wrote is seen on this slide. So we, we have writing, we have reading, phonics, write aloud. Um, some things are independent, some things are guided. We have listening, fluency, read aloud, vocabulary, comprehension, to name just a few. And um, every single one of these components is part of the Balanced Literacy Classroom. So our whole book is written from the perspective of the Balanced Literary class, Literacy Classroom. And we have a quote on this slide from Temple Grandin. People are always looking for the single magic bullet that will totally change everything. There is no single magic bullet. And that's very true. All students are so different and we need to try everything that we can until we find out what works for each individual child. So this is a quote that mirrors what I just said from Valentina that was included in our book. Workshop is a structure and not a particular program. So it's not a program. No matter what is implemented in the classroom or district, it has to be accommodated and scaffolded to meet the very specific needs of the students sitting in front of you at that moment. So no problem, no program can ever do that ever. Only a teacher who knows each student, their strengths, their language and literacy levels, their passions and who they are can truly do it. So you have to you have to know your students and base everything on our students. So we follow our students. OK. OK, thank you so much, Melinda, for that great introduction and overview of of how we structured our book using truly the gradual release of responsibility and ensuring that students are gonna get exactly what they need during reading and writing. Um, no matter if you use a readers and writers workshop or if you use a curriculum that's more of a basal um, or some other type of daily five or, or another type of um, reader reading or writing curriculum, you're gonna find that the components that we share with you are going to be relevant because in essence, you're probably giving explicit instruction through some type of mini lesson or doing a read aloud. You're probably giving independent time for reading. You're probably pulling groups, um, letting students write on their own, doing shared reading and writing all those critical components, working with students on pho uh, phonics, um, all of those important parts that students need to become readers and writers, you're doing with them. And one of the most important parts of um, literacy is allowing students time to read. That's something that we found very integral in, um, in our work and we embedded that in all of the chapters of our book. It's important because if we want to grow students that love reading and writing, we have to give them time in the classroom to actually practice that reading. It really, uh, if we expect our kids to read at home or read for pleasure or read as adults, we have to make time for that in our classrooms and build that stamina, build that confidence, build that love while they're with us in the classroom. Otherwise, we can't expect them to do that at home on their own. One of our favorite authors and mentors, both Mel and I love, uh, Reggie Routman says that struggling readers need to spend more time reading and not doing activities about reading. So one of the best ways to grow readers is to let them read, 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 read. As readers, they're going to gain more vocabulary, they're gonna gain more fluency, they're going to learn about language structures. So much more can be gained through reading than through activities about reading or being pulled out of class during reading instruction and so forth. Reading is critical for our students. 
with that being said, we want to be really cognizant about the books that we provide in our classroom and the books that we read aloud to our students, the books that we use for shared reading, all of that's important because we, when we share those books, when we put them in our classrooms, when we put them in the library, we're showing kids what we value and they notice what is not there too. And they connect with books or they don't connect with books. So we need to be really cognizant about the books that uh, that our kids have access to. We want them to be mirrors that they can see themselves in. We want them to be windows where they can explore other ideas. We want books that students can build community around in our classrooms and begin to empathize with one another. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a, a better time for us to build community and help students empathize more with one another than than today, uh, than now in society. This is a great time from a young age to start creating those bonds, building community and empathy in our children and books, shared books. Uh, that's probably the best way to grow that in our kiddos, in our classrooms. I'd like to share with you a couple of strategies that you can use tomorrow if you're with your students. Um, that we implemented in this book. Uh, one of them is a, uh, a word work or uh, making and breaking words activity. And you can do this face-to-face -face with your kids or you can do it virtually. And I'm going to be using the platform Jamboards to share this with you. So uh, it's actually one of my favorite platforms right now. I think a lot of you are probably trying it out as well. There are so many possibilities with it. So I'm gonna share with you um, how to use Jamboard to help students with making and breaking words. So I'm, I'm just gonna navigate off of this for just a second. And And then I'll come right back to it. So this is an example of a Jamboard that I created for my students. And when looking at it, I'm gonna start by working with either a small group of kids or with all of my students, or even just one of them, depending on the needs of my, the kids in front of me. And I'm gonna show them that I'm gonna use these letters to build a word. And I might build this word on my own with them or I might have them build it. I might have the student create a word. But in this case, we built the word cat and we sound it out together, k a t And then we write it out to the side and I model the writing and I even drew a little picture for them here. Now, next I would say, you know what we can do is we can use the same letters, some of the same letters and build a new word. So we're gonna keep the, um, we're gonna keep the, the C and the A and we're gonna make a new word, k a we're gonna make a new word. And so I'm gonna let students now make a new word using one of the other blue squares. So the student might say, let's use the N. Okay, we're gonna pull it over. Let's sound it out. K, A, N. Together now, can, can, can. So now we're going to write it out. We're gonna write out the word K, A, N. Now can is like um, a can of soup maybe or a can of green beans. I'm having green beans tonight with my dinner. Or it can be like the word, I can. I can ride a bike. I can draw. I can sing. What can you do? Now we're gonna do one more word. So we're still gonna use C-A What's another word we can build with C-A? C-A. And the students might choose the P. Let's sound it out. C-A-P. 
cap, cap, and they tell me cap. We write it and we draw out the picture. Now I'm gonna put them in groups and I might do this in breakout rooms or um, it may be something that we do in small groups together face-to-face -face in the classroom. But if I do have Zoom breakout rooms, I'm going to share these with my students and they can work on their own Jamboard. And as they're working on these, I can actually see students manipulating the tiles. The other one I'd like to share with you is, it's a mashup. And the two techniques that I'm uh, going to use in this one are picture word inductive model and the sentence patterning chart. And if you know me, you know I love the picture word inductive model. So I had to figure out multiple ways to use it virtually as well, because I know many of you are teaching virtually right now, or you're teaching concurrently, or you may be teaching virtually or concurrently in the near future. So picture word inductive model is going to incorporate listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And so it's fabulous to use with our English learners as they're learning to read and write in a new language. So what I did is on my Jamboard, I dropped in a picture. It can be a picture related to a book we're reading, or it can be just a picture related to something we're studying in science or social studies. So I might incorporate a content area as well. All right. So we we have the picture and the first thing we do is we brainstorm everything we see in the picture. And if we're, we're face to face, then we can brainstorm together. Otherwise we might be brainstorming in um, breakout rooms or we might be brainstorming with a stuffed animal. So I might say, boys and girls, take your stuffed animal, take your uh, study buddy and brainstorm what you see in this picture. All right, so once we've had time to brainstorm, I ask students to tell me everything that they see in the picture, all the nouns, and we label them. In this demonstration, I've already labeled them for you, but in real life, as students tell me what they see, I'm going to label it. And I wanted to show you right here in the middle, when they said spots, I'm gonna level up their vocabulary. First of all, I'm gonna honor what they know, their funds of knowledge, and then I'm gonna say that, yes, the Luna Moth does have spots, but these are also called eye spots. And these are used to ward off predators that are trying to eat the Luna Moth. So we're learning new vocabulary, we're leveling up what they come to us with. After we've labeled all of the nouns, we read them. So now we read together. We choral or echo read, antenna, head, eye spots, spots, thorax, body, abdomen, tail, wing. And then time to brainstorm all the adjectives. After brainstorming, we label the adjectives. And as you can see, the adjectives are now labeled in a new color. We read all the adjectives and the nouns. So we're practicing that reading fluency. We're practicing um, this, these vocabulary words. Now we brainstorm verbs. And after we brainstorm verbs, we label the verbs. And we read again, multiple opportunities to read. Listening, speaking, and reading so far. They're only watching me write. All right, so after we've had multiple opportunities to brainstorm, speak, and read, we're going to move now to sentence patterning. And we're going to sentence pattern using the labeled picture as a word bank. Luna moths are feathery, large, beautiful, and so on. Luna moths have eye spots, wings, antenna, so on. They can fly, glide, reproduce, and so on. And so we're gonna list out everything that students say in the sentence patterning chart, and then use that in addition to sentence stems. So students can build their own sentences verbally, 
and move towards building paragraphs. Some, of, some students will write very elaborate, well-written paragraphs, and others will just use those sentence stems and only insert the words from the labeled picture that we used, and that's okay. Each student's piece will be different, and it will, it will be related to their um, proficiency level. So that's an example of how to use the um, picture word inductive model and sentence patterning chart. And both of those are located in our book. Um, they're both in the book as additional activities used to promote that listening, speaking, reading, and then move towards writing as well. What we want to do is provide that access point for students wherever they are in their journey of reading and writing and in language. We want to make sure that they have the support they need in order to progress at, at faster levels, but also at a deeper level. So we are really excited to share this book with you all. Um, it is on the Sidelets webpage. Um, we also have it on Google Play for those of you who don't have, uh, it's not really easy for you to get um, the book otherwise. Uh, we want to continue to connect with you and share more. So feel free to let us know if you have any questions. And Mel and I are just eager, eager, eager to share more strategies with you and, and learn how you're using it too. So, so good. Okay, everybody who's interested, I just posted the link again into the chat. Thank you so much, Valentina and Melinda, for your information. I think everybody really, really appreciated what you had to say, and it was kind of neat to get a peek at what the inside might look like. If you're really interested, we're going to be telling you about the launch. That's where we're going to get some more information. So good, good, good. Now, November 16th, mark your calendar. It's a Monday, I believe, um, at 5 p.m. We're going to be doing a virtual book launch. If you've joined us before, this is a new thing that Sidelets is trying out in this COVID era. And it's been kind of fun to be able to get online, take a sneak peek throughout the book, actually be able to dive deep into it dialogue with our audience about what they're excited about seeing, let you know what trainings might look like with this. Um, but something special that's going to be happening with this November 16th one, not only are we going to be giving away a couple of copies of the book, but everybody that registers and attends is going to be receiving a surprise. I'm not allowed to tell you what the surprise is, but you're going to be getting a surprise coming to you and it has to do with this book. So we very much encourage you to attend that. You're able to sign up on our website. An autographed copy. Look at that. Somebody wants an autographed copy. We'll find a way to make that work. We'll find a way to make that one work. But definitely. So November 16th, we'll see you all again then. And then December 14th, if you take a look, is going to be the first online training that Valentina and Melinda are going to be giving um, with this book. So again, sidelesseducation.com is your place to go. You sign up for that. Our uh, book launch is free. You will have to register and pay for the conference, of course, but you'll get a certificate um, to show your attendance and your work. So two opportunities coming up. And then... Let's see, what else do we have for you? A couple of upcoming events for Sidelets. Now, again, if you're new to us, our website has all of these upcoming opportunities that range from all grade levels. We have an, um, opportunities for bilingual learners, for English language learners, whatever it is that you need, we have somebody here that's able to support you. Coming up immediately, November 2nd through December 13th, we're trying out an online course. So this is one of our first online courses that we're doing, and it has to do with sheltered instruction. Allison Hand will be leading us through that. Um, I'm going to skip over that one. November 7th, we have Monica Lara, who's going to be doing her book, Toma la Palabra, specifically for bilingual and dual education classrooms. And then Dr. Patricia Morales is going to be offering her very famous, that fills up all the time, Texas ESL 154 test prep. So we're very much all about helping to prep our educators, whether you're looking for bilingual certification or English language ESL certification, we have those opportunities for you. And then I think after this, 
the last thing we did want to mention, I said this hashtag before, but sideless ed chat is what we want you to follow if you want to stay up to date on what we're doing in terms of our Twitter chats, as well as our books and some of our trainings. Every first and third Tuesday of the month from 7 to 7.30, Valentina is going to lead us with an online Twitter chat. She always has a slew of wonderful people joining us. Sometimes they're outside authors, sometimes they're our internal sidelets authors and consultants. No matter the case, the conversation is always really lively and interactive. And I think we all walk away from that with gaining some really valuable tools in our tool belts and conversations with our colleagues, which is wonderful. And then we have the sidelets blog. Now, the fun thing about uh, today being Wednesday. Wednesday happens to be the day that we release our latest blog episodes. And we just, just, just published one a couple of hours ago um, from Carmen Wen in New Caney ISD, I believe, on adapting Katie. text. And it's fantastic. Did I say that right? With Katie ISD. Oh, Katie, it's Katie. I'm so sorry. It was Houston. See, it's Houston or Houston brain. It's the Houston area. Katie, I'm so sorry, Carmen. We know you're from Katie. Okay. <laughs> And with that, we're coming to a close. Thank you so much to everybody who's attended. You can follow us, keep in contact with us. Please get a copy of the book. We're so excited to be able to share this with the world. It really is quite beautiful. And um, the neat thing about it, oh no, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but we just want to say that there may be parts in the book that are specifically tailored to our current teaching context, which has to do with a lot of remote and hybrid learning. We're not leaving you all in the dust with that. So it's just a little, little thing to, to look forward to. Okay. Anything else, ladies? Do you want to add? No, thank you all so mm -hmm. much. We appreciate you. And we're so excited that you're excited about the book, too. We love it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really enjoyed it. And we cannot wait for you to get the book into your hands. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, all.